Hello and willkommen. Welcome to Aiden Eyewitness. And I'm here in the east of Manchester, just next to Phillips Park. And just behind me is the amazing new music and entertainment venue, Co-op Live, that is nearing completion. We're going to take a look at how it looked a year ago and a year and a half ago. We're also going to move along the central swathe, that's what I'm calling it, of Manchester city centre to take a look at some of the new uh, in, under construction and proposed projects. The most environmentally sustainable arena in the UK. That's what the boards proclaimed on the 3rd of December 2022. We are on Alan Turing Way. This is how it looked on the 17th of December 2023 already at an advanced stage of construction. By the Ashton Canal, this is how the site looked a year and a half ago. The concrete cores were starting to take shape, with some of the steel framework beginning to grow. By December, things were moving ahead, and a year later, we can see an almost completed structure. This venue will be a project of superlatives. It will accommodate up to 23,500 people. It's planned to have 32 bars, restaurants and clubs. It said the venue will feel like a nightclub, certainly one of the biggest Manchester has ever seen. Oakview Group is developing the project in partnership with the Cooperative Group. It's a far cry from the small venues in the city centre, many of which have sadly closed. Co-op Live will put Manchester into an exclusive club of cities with large venues, as with Madison Square Garden in New York and the O2 in London. This project is going to be a major catalyst in the already impressive development of this part of Manchester, which was an urban wasteland in previous years. Let's look along the Ashton Canal towards the city centre and we move to our next project, which I featured previously. Ancoats Dispensary stood derelict for many years. Despite the efforts of a dedicated and hard-working friends group, they couldn't secure funding for their plans. It was decided it would become an affordable housing development, and that project is nearly complete. We can see the new addition behind the facade, which is gradually being revealed in all its glory. Moving from the rear to the front, we can see how new and old have been harmoniously combined. It's a prime example of how saving an old, characterful facade and putting a new building behind it is much better than destroying the facade. The display boards are informative. There's a timeline and let's look more closely at that magnificent ornate exterior. The original tower was lost but now it has been entirely rebuilt. Here's a visualization of the rear but what are those stickers? Zone 147 Leipzig, a city I know well. Sona 147 is a supporters group for the football team RB Leipzig who were beaten by Manchester City in November 2023. It's great to have this potent reminder of Anko's past standing among all the new facades. Imagine if it had not been given a new lease of life as part of a new building and had been pulled down. Some people dismiss this as facadism, but personally I am, so to speak, a fully paid up card carrying supporter of facadism. Now over on Great Anko Street, we check out the progress of One Port Street, a major residential development that will reach up 32 storeys into the sky. It's currently in its early stages. I'll look at it in a bit more detail in another video as it starts to take shape properly. Now we are on Piccadilly, next to Piccadilly Gardens. On the corner of Oldham Street is the former Yorkshire Building Society. Once upon a time, jewellers Saki and Lawrence were on the ground floor. Today, it's Five Guys and Betfred. It was built in 1881, architects Royal and Bennett. This information from the excellent Guide Across Manchester by Philip Atkins. Published in 1987, it's one of the first books about Manchester that I bought. The other major building under renovation is the former Debenhams. As stated in Guide Across Manchester, it was built in 1932, designed by Harry H. Fairhurst. It's in the Art Deco style and very distinctive, with its white stone exterior, zigzag patterns and multi-sided towers on the corners. It's Grade 2 listed. Demerims closed in 2020 and the future of the building was uncertain. Now Munich-based AM Alpha are transforming it into a mixed-use development with a shopping arcade and offices on the upper floors. A new glass structure added on top will provide great views over the city centre and it will regain its original name, Rylands. The visualisations look great. There's a similar project in Dublin to develop the former Cleary's. Now we are further down Piccadilly, going towards Piccadilly Station, next to the 192 bus stop. 
I've often admired that empty 1930s former bank building. I didn't realize it was grade two listed. Now there is a proposal to build a tall tower right next to it and turn the bank into an exhibition space. The developers are north side and they plan to construct a 32 story tower housing an apart hotel with 251 bedrooms and a rooftop restaurant. A previous plan for a 23 story budget hotel didn't materialize. The developers plan to achieve whole life net zero carbon. I see there are more and more zero carbon buildings now in planning and under construction. It's great that this distinctive 1930s building will be saved. The new tower looks great. It's not been approved yet, so I'll keep an eye on how things progress. In St. Peter's Square, I came across this demonstration by people from Hong Kong. This is relevant as many construction projects in Manchester are financed by companies in mainland China as well as Hong Kong. That's something I'd like to research further. Now we are on Lower Mosley Street and walking past the Bridgewater Hall on the left and the former Manchester Central Station on the right, we come to Viaducts. A major project by Solboy in association with their construction partner Domus. Phase 1 of Viaducts is already well advanced. It's a residential tower with 40 stories, 139 meters or 456 feet high. The revised plans for Phase 2 were unveiled in 2023. There will be a 76 story skyscraper and it will be 240 meters or 787 feet tall. It looks very impressive. These are the plans which have been worked out in detail. They're not just a sketch on the back of an envelope. The skyscraper will have a distinctive jeweled exterior with facets. The triangular shape at the top reminds me of New York's One World Trade Center. Architects for the entire Viadox project are Simpson Hall. There will be a smaller triangular building containing affordable homes. What makes the project unique is the fact that the three structures are built not on an empty piece of ground, but above the undercroft of a 19th century brick-built former railway station, whose arch spaces will be utilized as part of the project. Both Viaducts 1 and the planned Viaducts 2 skyscraper sit daringly on Y-shaped concrete supports. The new tower, when completed, is expected to be the tallest in Manchester. Though perhaps not for long, there is a race to the sky, as there was in New York a century ago. So who are Solboy? Solboy is a property development company fully owned and run by billionaire bookmaker Fred Dunn, founder of Betfred, and business manager Simon Ismail. Joanne Ogden is the director. As stated on their website, they have developed 3,250 homes in the Manchester area and other parts of the UK. Their projects include Viaducts, Glassworks, Victoria House and many others in Manchester, as well as one Clooney Mews in London. They have offices on the Crescent, Salford. Now let's take a look at the progress of the Bootle Street construction site, named after the Archangel St. Michael. Yes, it's called St. Michael's. To find out why, keep watching. As we can see, the structure on the east side can now be seen well above the 1930s police station facade, which was to have been demolished under the original plans. We see the site of the synagogue now demolished to make way for the project. A little shocking perhaps, but many churches have been demolished in central Manchester over the last hundred years. We are seeing the distinctive exterior of the building taking shape. It's such a contrast with the former police station. And the reason for the name? St. Michael's? And that's with an apostrophe. The patron saint of the police is St. Michael. This development is going to completely change the character and dynamic of this corner of the city centre. Work on the tower has not yet commenced. Will it cast a shadow over Albert Square? Well, keep watching Ed and Eyewitness. The Abercrombie pub has been retained, including this very nice mural. Now we cross the river into Salford, and what's happening on this corner? The corner of Trinity Way and Chapel Street. Refurbishment is in progress, and it looks like recladding. A familiar name can be seen. Domus. So who are Domus? They are a development and construction company founded in 2017. They work closely with Solboy. Both companies have offices on or close to the Crescent in Salford. They're involved in many projects across Salford and Manchester. The managing director is Lee McCarran. I like this cityscape graffiti art further up Trinity Way. I wonder, did the artist make these pictures with the agreement of Domus? And on this location, a major new residential building has been approved by Salford City Council.
Council. It's a project of Solboy in association with Domus. 26 stories, 250 flats, and nearly a thousand square feet of commercial space. The plans were submitted by Ewan Kelly Property Solutions. Ewan Kelly is the author of Rebuilding Manchester, which features my photographs. And the name of the new apartment building? Obsidian. Diagonally across from here is the site currently occupied by the Citroen car dealership, but they decided to sell the land, and it's expected that here, another new residential development will emerge in due course. What's it going to look like? Who will the developer be? And how tall will it be? I don't have answers to those questions yet, but please keep watching Aiden Eyewitness. And remember, you saw the future here. I will continue to document the rise of Manchester with its glittering tall buildings, new residential and office developments, its refurbishment of the magnificent buildings of the past, as well as similar in Liverpool and connected cities. If you found this video interesting, please like, subscribe, tell others and post a comment. If you'd like to support what I'm doing, you can buy me a coffee, though actually I prefer tea. There are two options in the description. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Salford und Manchester.